All right, so analyzing graphs and sketches of graphs. Here we go. So our first one. So here's a graph. So graphs can be graphs can show the relationship between quantities without using specific numbers on the axes. All right. So here's just a quick example of the graph. All right. So you have your time and you have your distance. Time and distance. So you can actually tell a lot from a graph, even if you have numerical values there on the x-axis, so if you don't have the 1, 2, 3, 5, whatever, and the y value doesn't, you can still see or get an idea of what's happening on the graph. So in this, you have time and you have distance. You're always starting out here at the origin, and here's time. What is time doing as you move to the right? What's happening to my time? It's increasing. Yeah, it's increasing, right? So the time's increasing. And what's happening to my distance as when I move up? It's also increasing, right? So it's just to know the basics, all right? If you're moving to the right on the x-axis, you are increasing. If you're moving up on the y-axis, you are decreasing. So when we look at this graph, we start here, right? We're starting at some distance. And what's happening to the graph in this first section here? It's increasing. Yep, it's increasing. What's happening to my graph in this next section here? No change. Yeah, no change. It's staying constant. It's flat. And then lastly, what's happening to my graph? And this species is decreasing, right? So you could easily just look at the graph and tell what it's doing, right? Without any numerical values. All right, so just quick little analyzing of the graph. Look at this next one. So interpreting a graph, okay, we're going to be, um, you know, work with the person next to you very quickly, and we're going to answer these questions. How is the graph, how is this graph different from other graphs that you've studied so far this year? Now, we've been doing all linear functions this year. How is this much, how is this one different from, what you have been studying. Yep. It's not starting at zero. Yeah, it's not starting at zero. What else? Um, well, the graphs we said before, they're Yeah, they're always in one direction, maybe starting at whatever y intercept and going in one direction. Now this graph is going in multiple directions. Okay, so different things are happening at different intervals of time. So in this interval of time, something's happening. It's constant. In this interval of the time, it's increasing. Then it's constant. Then it's decreasing, right? So in different intervals, different things are happening in those times. So if you were to write a short paragraph that describes how the water level changes over time, what can you say on the inter on the first interval here about the water level? Yep. It doesn't change. Yeah, it doesn't change. What can you say on the second interval here of the water level? It's increasing. It's increasing. What can you say on the next water level? It has no change. No change as well. And then the last water level? It's increasing. Yeah, it's decreasing. All right, so that could be my little short paragraph. I'm going to skip that part. But just a little quick, all right? And what situation can this graph represent? And we just say the change uh, um, yearly, um, as rains, any, anything, you know, something in that, that nature. Yep. Maybe what? Okay. So some, it could be waterfall, anything in that. Each situation with the appropriate graph uh, and explain our reasoning, all right? So here's situation A, and I'll scroll down to part B and C and D in a second. So you gradually increase your speed. Then you ride at a constant speed along a bike, uh, bike path. You then slow down until you reach your friend's house, period. Of these graphs, which one would match part A? Uh, a, B, C, or D? C. All right, so we have one as C. So let's, be, let's, let's go one more time. So you gradually increase your speed. Okay, so I'm gradually increasing my speed. I agree. Then you ride at a constant speed. Okay, so now here is I, where I am I'm constant. You then slow down. So now here you go, and your speed is slowing down until you get to your friend's house. Perfect. Matches perfect. Part B, or B. You gradually increase your speed, then go up, and then go down a hill. You quickly come to a stop at an intersection. Which one would be this one? So you gradually increase your speed, you go down a hill, you then quickly come to an intersection. What do you think? I think it's A. Okay, A. You got B, and D. 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 So we got A, D. Anybody else? All right, so let's take a look one. You gradually increase your speed. So if we look at A, A is gradually increasing, sure, and D is gradually increasing, absolutely. You then go down a hill. So imagine yourself riding a bike down a hill. What's going to happen to your speed if you're going down the hill? Yeah, it's going to increase. You, you don't even have to pedal because your speed is going to just go that much faster, right? If you're, if you're uh, biking on a flat plane, you're going to pedal, you're going to have some speed. Once you get down the hill, like imagine yourself on a bike or a skateboard or you know, rollerblades or 
in last case. You're going to pick up a lot of speed while you're going down. So which one, graph A or graph B, has the one that increases the speed? Yep. Does graph A increase the speed or does graph D increase the speed? Graph A, okay, so look, my speed is increasing here. So right from that one, we're going we're to get rid of D because this is where my speed starts to decrease. And when I'm going down the hill, I'm not decreasing, I'm increasing. So A is B. So we have C is A, A is situation B. All right, let's read uh, C. You gradually increase your speed, then stop at a store for a couple of minutes, you then continue to ride gradually, uh, increasing your speed. So we have options D and uh, B available. What do we got? Okay, so we said D, so you gradually increase your speed. Okay, so I'm gradually increasing here. Then stop. So my, D, my speed goes down and I stop. You then, uh, you stop at the store for a couple minutes. So at Here's my time at the store. I'm not moving. My time is going, but my speed is zero. And then you grad and then you gradually bike away. And there's your situation C. And then the last one by default is going to be. So would you go up and then stop? So you gradually increase your speed. So this is when your speed is increasing, right? You then then stop at the store. So before you in so as you're increasing your speed, you have to decrease your speed till you get to no speed right so this is where right here you stop once you stop then you stop the store and you stay there for a couple minutes so here's the minutes i stay at the store time continues right that's why i keep moving this to the right but my speed is still zero because i'm not on my bike i'm just hanging out and then gradually increase the speed and then i once i leave my speed starts to increase as the time increases as well all right and then the last one you ride at a constant speed then go up a hill. So think about what happens to your speed as you go up a hill. It decreases. So you are riding at a constant speed. The fact that it's constant should be a big hint that this is going to be a flat line. Once you go up a hill, you should be going down in speed. Once you're at the top of the hill, so this could be my top of the hill here, you gradually increase your speed. So once you come to the top of the hill, you start going back down the hill, and your speed starts to increase again. Looks, these graphs, uh, the graphs represent the heights of a rocket and a weather balloon after they are launched. Okay, so one of these graphs represent a rocket, one of these graphs represent a weather balloon. All right, so how are the graphs similar? How are they different? What do we think about them being similar? So they're similar since they both increase. Okay, so both increasing, that's definitely how they're similar. How are they different? They're not, like one of one is linear and one is not linear, right? They're both increasing at different uh, speeds or different paces, right? Um, compare the steepness of each graph. What about the steepness of each graph? Um, the rocket just uh, goes like, straight up on, at a constant speed. And then the um, weather balloon is kind of like a flat line. Yeah, it's kind of like a flat line. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yep. Uh, I think it's not sure what they're saying. Oh, oh, I thought. Keep going. Yeah, I think the higher the balloon is. Okay, so we're saying the weather balloon have more of a curve. The rocket would be more straight up. Um, I think that when the rocket launch, like when it takes off, it has more speed going up than higher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? So right when the rocket's being launched, it's like five, four, three, two, one, blast off. It always looks like it's going pretty slow, but once the rocket gets further and further into the atmosphere, the speed starts to increase. And that's what's happening here. So this is actually the rocket. So it starts off, the launch, initial launch is slower. As it starts to get higher and higher into the atmosphere, the speed gets, gets to get uh, faster and faster as it goes. We're going to compare graphs. All right, so we just analyzed some graphs. We're going to compare two graphs, work with partner. Uh, the graph represents the speed of two cars. One car is approaching a stop sign, and the other car is approaching a yield sign. So biggest difference, stop sign and a yield sign. So I, I know you guys are not driving quite yet. At a stop sign, you have to come to a complete stop. They look both ways and they continue. Okay, so each car physically has to stop. A yield sign, you don't have to come to a complete stop. You could approach the yield sign as you're looking. So if you could, your tires can still be moving, you can still be rolling. You obviously don't want to be, you know, flying through this car. You know, yeah, you to be prepared to stop. but be, be be prepared to stop if you need to. Okay, because you don't know if you have a yield, if the other person has a yield. But the point is, you can still be moving on the yield versus the stop sign. You have to come to a complete stop. All right. So how are the graphs similar? How are they different? Explain. How would you say these graphs are similar? What would you say about the similarity of these graphs? Okay, so they're both slowing down. And what would you say the difference is? Okay, so the first one's nonlinear. The second one is linear, or curves and no curves. Yep. Okay, so it looks like graph A is slowing down, where graph B is actually coming to a stop and the, and the speed is actually at reaches the x-axis which means the speed comes to zero okay compare the steepness of each graph how would you compare the steepness of each graph yep um, in the, in, so the beginning of the graph okay so in the beginning in the beginning portion of this time interval this graph seems to be steeper than graph B, but as time increases, and we're looking at the steepness at a later time, then graph B has a more of a steepness uh, as time increases. Okay, so just being able to give a quick sentence about that is what I'm looking for. And which graph do you think represents the car approaching a stop sign, and which one is the yielding? So we've kind of said that already, but... So graph A is the yield, right? So I'm going to yield, not completely coming to a stop. And graph B, I'm actually coming to a stop here. And you can tell because it hits the x-axis. And if you hit the x-axis here, then that means your speed is zero. Uh, just a little, little thought on your own, in your own words. How can you use these graphs to represent relationships between quantities without using numbers? Um, you know, here's, a, here's a possible answer. When you determine which variables you want the horizontal axis or your x-axis and your y-axis to represent um, real life, you know, whatever this word problem is talking about, take the important information of the word problems and label your axes and then from there come to some kind of conclusion about what's going on in the, uh, in the word problem. Okay? Um, describe a possible situation with the graph shown. This could have any number of possible situations. Can you think of one? Okay, so somebody's uh, so a hot air balloon's on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, it's above ground. After some time, it comes down. Maybe they refuel, and the next person comes up, and then off again. You know, definitely a situation. And, and then there could be any number of situations. Anybody want to give another one? Yep. A plane landing and taking back Yeah, so perfect. So you have a plane maybe at Newark Airport. It's above ground. After some time, it lands. It refuels. Next airport, next flight to Miami, and they're off. Okay, kite going down. Maybe we twine this string, get it ready, and then it goes back up. Awesome. And sketch a graph similar to graphs uh, in activities one and two. Exchange the graphs with a classmate. So we'll do that at a later time. Let's see what the next example is. Describe the change in temperature in each city. So I have two cities here, uh, Newport and Belfast. Um, how would you describe the change in temperatures in Newport? Excellent. So the temperature is getting colder with some time increase. So as the day progresses, the temperature gets colder. Uh, throughout some time of the day, the temperature stays constant. 
and then as the day moves on, the temperature starts to warm up again. Okay? Yep? Well, on the Belfast Union one, it like gradually gets hotter until like soon. Great, so it gradually gets hotter towards maybe the middle of the day, and then and it may gradually starts to decrease again. Perfect. You know, great examples. And then it says make three comparisons from the graph. So if you were to make any three comparisons on this one, I'll give you some hints on this one. Um, both graphs, on the comparisons, both graphs show increasing and decreasing temperatures. So, right, they're both increasing and decreasing at some point. Both graphs are nonlinear. Right? Linear would just have to be that straight line starting from somewhere and going straight up. Right, We don't have that case there. And what else we got? And then in Belfast, it is warmer at the end of the day than the beginning of the day. And in Newport, it's colder at the end of the day than the beginning of the day. So here, here's my temperature in Newport. Starts off with a temperature higher. And as the day progresses, my temperature is lower at that point of the, as the time increases. And then in Belfast, right, so it starts out with a lower temperature at some point in the day and then it ends with a little bit of a higher temperature as in Belfast, Maine. That represents each situation, so let's see what each situation entails. So a stopped subway train gains speed at a constant rate until it reaches a maximum speed. It travels at the speed for a while and then slows down at a constant rate until it comes to a stop. So we want to sketch a graph. So let's first make our let's first give ourselves a xy chart and let's label this xy chart. So what are we labeling the x axis? What are we labeling the y axis? What do we label the x axis? Yep. Uh, time. Yeah, so we got time on the x and it gains a constant speed, speed and we got speed on the y axis, all right? So the sub, a stopped subway train. So it's stopped, so that means it starts at zero, right? So if it's stopped, it starts here at zero, right? It could, it could be anywhere, but we're going to stop. We're going to start right there. So a stopped subway train gains speed at a constant rate, which means another way of telling you that this is going to be linear, right? So it gains speed at a constant rate. So here's my speed that it gains over time at a constant rate until it reaches a maximum speed. So let's say this is the max speed it reaches. It travels at this speed for a while, which means that what? When it says it travels at this speed for a while, what's happening? What's continuing? Oh, the, line's the line's going to be horizontal, so time is going to continue. So it's going to stay at the speed for a little while, for however long until it gets to its next stop. So there's the while. It then slows down at a constant rate. So if it slows down, that means what's happening to my slope or what's happening to the graph this point, at this point. It's going to go down and slows down at a constant rate until it comes to a stop, which means that the speed must come to zero. <laughs> so if it slows down at a constant rate and until it comes to a stop right back down to zero. So the speed will be zero and the time can be whatever time has passed, but the speed here would have to be zero because it has come to a complete stop. This one, again, I'm going to draw my xy chart, and let's label my x, let's label my y. What is my x? What is my y? What are you going to have? We got for my x. Yeah, we could do TV size for the x, and then for the y, price. we could do price or money at the y. Okay? So a Television set increases in size, comma, the price increases at an increasing rate. Okay, what we got? Okay, it'll be linear. Um, if you have zero size TV, that means you didn't buy a TV, so we can start this at zero. And if you're increasing the TV, so here's the size of the TV, the size of the um, rate, but this also said, be careful here on this one, this says the price increases at an increasing rate rate. So is this an increasing rate or is this a constant rate? Constant. Okay, so we're not going to use the constant rate. We want to do an increasing rate. What do you think an increasing rate would look like? Yep. Yep, it's going to go up in this kind of curve, right? So here, as you get further and further, so if you notice from here to here, so if you look at the rate on these two intervals here, and you draw a line in between these two, 
versus a rate on these two intervals here, and you were to draw a line at these two, if I kind of pull these apart or pull these aside for a second without changing the slope of them, which one of these two lines have a greater slope? Is this slope greater, M1, or is M2 greater? Yeah, slope 2 is greater. So the price increases at an increasing rate. So as the rate increases, so this is my M, my slope 2 will be here. This will have an increasing rate as the TV size increases as well. So look for those context clues, which tell you that it's linear versus not versus a nonlinear curve. Quick examples you could try on your own. So you got your first one. A uh, fully charged battery loses its charge at a constant rate until it has no charge left. You plug it in and recharges it fully, then loses that charge. So here's the first one. Get, you can pause at this point and try this on your own. But here's the first one. Uh, you're looking at time. You're looking at charge. You start. You could be starting at a full charge. Let's say that's my full or max charge. And time goes by and you're down to a zero charge. All right, so you're going from a full charge to a zero charge. You charge and then some time goes by and you end up getting a full charge again. Then you get on the phone again, and you go until it comes down to a no charge left again, right? So piece by piece. So fully charged battery, fully. Starts there. Constant rate goes down until you get to no charge. Here's my no charge. You charge, you plug it in, and charge is fully. So here it goes back to fully. Then it loses its charge at a constant rate until it gets back to no charge. All right, and then the availability, as the availability of quantity of a product increases, the price decreases at a decreasing rate. That's a hint that this should not be... A linear function. All right, so if we're looking at this one, the price is my y. The price decreases at a decreasing rate uh, as the quality uh, quantity of the product increases. So here's the quantity increasing, going up, and the price is decreasing at a decreasing rate. So it's coming down at a decreasing rate, implying um, that this is going down. So here's we have one right here. Here's another rate. This rate is decreasing faster than this rate. And then as you go down, you notice the rate of all these lines. This one is the decreasing more and more as you get closer and closer to a higher quantity.